Welcome to e Knowhow. In this video, we will look at how a CMOS uh, Schmidt trigger is built and what a CMOS Schmidt trigger is. So, first let's look at a CMOS inverter which is built using one P channel and one N channel and MOS devices. And so, here is your V in and here is your V out and this is tied to VDD the supply voltage and this is ground so now when we look at V in versus V out for an inverter so I draw V in on the x-axis and V out on the y-axis and V in can go from 0 all the way to VDD So V out, when V in is at ground, V out is at VDD for an inverter. And then it is at VDD till the N channel starts to turn on. And at that point, somewhere around the VDD over 2 mark, so somewhere here you see the transition of the output voltage and the output voltage goes to zero. And now let's look at the point where V in and V out are equal. So that could be, that is called when V in is equal to V out, that is called the V threshold voltage of the inverter. So that is the voltage called the threshold voltage of the inverter. This is not threshold voltage for the NMOS or PMOS, but the threshold voltage for the inverter. And this is usually close to VDD over 2 if the inverter is designed properly. So it will be closer to VDD over 2. So now, this, but one thing we need to notice is that if VN is going from 0 towards VDD, or if it is going from VDD towards 0, the trip point is always the same. So if you draw in terms of transient behavior, so I'll draw input with uh, blue, say input is low, goes high, assume these are all very slow transitions, kind of DC, goes low again. Now if you draw your output, output would be high and it would start switching and then, then it goes back up high again. Now, if this is slow moving waveforms, if you look at these two switching points, they are the same and they are basically the V threshold of the inverter. So, but now, what is the disadvantage with this? Like say, for example, you have an input digital signal that uh, kind of has some kind of noise on it. So, for example, let's take an input digital signal that could go high but not all the way to VDD, go high, then goes to VDD, but then could have a noise on the signal and go slow. So if you pass this through a normal inverter, initially you will have the output is at VDD, but then it is going to respond to this spike because you see that once the V in is going higher, you, you will see the V out falling. So you will have, it will respond to that spike depending on how big it is and then go back up. And then here is the real transition back to ground because of the transition to VDD. And it will try to respond to this spike too. So, and then it transitions back again up, up to VDD. So here we said the blue is the input this is the input and this is the out v out so if you want to if you want to build a circuit that avoids this basically rejects those uh, uh, transitions or uh, you know rejects these uh, high going and low going uh, glitches so we have to build a circuit that has a kind of a different behavior and the behavior that we are looking for is, let's again 
draw v in versus v out or v out versus v in so v out here v in here this is vdd vdd here and now let me draw this now assume that this is the threshold voltage of the inverter which is vt i and v and it's very very close to vdd over 2 assume that the inverter has been designed such that this vt i and v is vdd over 2 so now we want say now let's look at the case where the input is going from low to high so the output would have been high initially so output is high and for a normal inverter at this point you would the output would have been somewhere at vd at the vt inv or vdd over 2 but now we want we want a different behavior we want the input to reach or basically move above the threshold voltage of the inverter and then we want the inverter to switch somewhere here higher this is going high now let's take a different color now let's take assume the input is high so the output is at ground initially and now we want it to switch we want it to remain low as the input is going low we want to we want it to remain low beyond the vt of the inverter and then switch here kind of exaggerated here so let me erase this first line or go back and something like this so it needs to switch so if you if you draw this where you had this this is the vt for inverter was switching around this point and now for this new circuit we want when the v v in is going high v in is going high we want it to switch after like after it has passed the vt of the inverter so at a higher voltage and when it is going low when v in is going low v in has to go much lower than the threshold of the inverter only then the output goes high so this circuit if you have this kind of uh, a circuit with this behavior now if you go back and look at this waveform now your output will reject these glitches here so your output would look uh, go be high it only transitions for this here it would remain low and transition out so it's basically rejecting the glitches on the input so now to build this circuit how to build this is this way so usually there are like a branch where there are 2p and 2n channels in series so instead of a normal inverter where it has 1p channel and 1n channel it has 2p channels and 2n channels there all the gates are tied together and your v in is here so basically we are trying to create a in between like a node a node a and node b which are in between the n and p because this is your output this is your output v out now we created a node a and b now what we do is to get this behavior so that behavior is dependent on the output so somehow it needs to look at the output and behave differently so now what we do is here we add a p channel transistor connected to ground on the source usually the p channel is not used to pass ground but now you do this now here on the bottom side take this node here and have an n channel transistor connected to vdd here and then the gate is tied to the output so now we have these two new devices say we will call this uh, p pn p new and n new mn 
and these are usually weaker than the devices in this branch these are the stronger and uh, these are usually weak devices that means either longer channel length or shorter width so what these what these two are doing now let's look at the case when v out v out is equal to 0 which means basically v in is VDD. <coughs> when V out is at ground, when V out is at ground, P nu is on and N nu is off, so we don't worry about that. When P nu is on, what it's doing is it's providing an additional path to ground, path to ground for node A. Now when V in, now when V in transitions from VDD to ground, so it's going from VDD to ground transition. So now what it has, now V out, we assume we know that V out will go transition from zero to VDD. But now what it has to do is, now it has to fight a new path to ground which we established through P new device. So these two P channels of the inverter need to fight, especially this one, needs to fight an extra path to ground here. So some of the current is some of the current charging the output node is actually diverted into through to the ground through this device till this V out goes high and turns off the P channel. So what happens is when you look at the when you look at this one, we are saying V in is going from VDD to ground. So V in is higher. So this is the pink curve. So V in has to go much lower. Only then it will transition the VDD. It will transition. Now let's take the other case when V out is VDD and V in is ground. Now when V out is VDD P nu is off this is off but N nu is on because this is the gate is at VDD so N nu is at on N nu is on and there is a path to VDD for node B. Now, so now when V in transitions from 0 to VDD, so V out we expect it to transition from VDD back to 0. Now in this case, when V in goes from 0 to VDD, these two N channel devices are turning on but now they need to f and try to pull this V out to ground. But now there is an additional current that they need to sync before that is goes through N nu and down here. So there is an additional current they need to sync. So they have to go, the V in has to go much lower for this and to happen and take V out to ground so that you turn off the N nu. So now if you see this, this one, this curve, when now we are saying the VN is going from 0 towards VDD, it's the blue curve here. So it's going from 0 to VDD and it goes, the VN has to go much higher than the threshold voltage of inverter to actually pull the V out to ground. So we have two different uh, transition points while going high and going low. So this is what we call hysteresis. So we add hysteresis to the device. So this is how a Schmidt trigger is built and where it's used. So Schmidt trigger usually it's an inverter is a modified kind of inverter with uh, two different trip points when input is going from low to high and input is going from high to low and it's built using um, six transistors.